the luckiest bank robber in the world or not? What does it take for somebody to go from a lottery millionaire to a bank robber? This is a question you may want to reserve for Jim Hayes. Our story opens in 1998. Jim was 35 at the time, and he got the biggest surprise of his life. Jim had won the lottery. Little did he know that his life was going to make a terrible turn in a few years. While working as a security guard, Jim decided to test his luck with a quick lottery ticket. That little piece of paper made Jim $19 million richer. The brand new millionaire opted for 20 annual payments, each one of $684,000. Jim was on the road to changing his life for the better. After all, so much money would certainly result in a lot of happiness, wouldn't it? Soon, however, things started to spiral out of control. He was soon wasting obscenely large amounts. According to Jim, the so-called lottery curse had gotten to him. The $19 million, however, weren't spent on therapy and getting better. Instead, Jim decided to make his life better through luxury purchases, spending on women and drugs. Eventually, things got so bad that Jim started getting advances on the next year lottery payment. But the sum he was wasting happened to be much larger than his win. In the late 90s, the lifestyle started getting the better of Jim. His first wife asked for a divorce and she was awarded half the annual lottery installments. Regardless of the significant reduction in income, however, Jim continued living as a big spender. Jim married his second wife in 2002. It was Valentine's Day. Soon after, she suggested that he take financial management classes, worried about the extravagant life Jim was used to. Still, Jim continued the downward spiral. He was an emotional spender, attempting to fill what was missing in his life through luxury purchases. Because he won, Jim also felt obliged to help friends less fortunate than him. Over the years after winning the lottery, he'd been known to hand out large sums to those who came asking. Medical problems piled up on top of everything else. Since he didn't have a steady job or healthcare, Jim had to cover the expenses out of his pocket. In 2007, Jim was left with no other choice but to file for bankruptcy. The sums of money he owed became so humongous that California Lottery had to begin withholding some of the funds he would have received otherwise in his annual payments. At wit's end, Jim was eager to do anything for money. This is when he got an idea to rob a bank. Armed with a mask and a stuffed pillow under his shirt, Jim went into Montecito Bank and Trust Branch in Carpinteria. In a few minutes, he was back in his car with $3,300 handed over by the cashier. Because he had gotten away with it, Jim decided to do it again. This time, however, he educated himself on how to carry a low-risk bank robbery. From books and documentaries, Jim found out that the best time to strike would be around about 5 p.m., the hour in which police officers changed their shifts. Jim used liquid bandages on his fingertips to avoid leaving fingerprints. Jim also refrained from using a gun in his robberies. He knew that a firearm would increase the length of sentence in the event that he ever got caught. In the coming five months, Jim carried out a number of additional heists. By the time the FBI showed up at his door, he had stolen over $40,000. With the stolen cash, he had bought a champagne-coloured getaway car. This vehicle gave him the nickname, the PT Cruiser Bandit, and this is how Jim Hayes was presented in all media reports. In October 2017, Jim was arrested in front of his friend's garage. He was gunned down and handcuffed at gunpoint by 15 agents. His wife also taken into custody, and both of them interrogated. Even when she saw bank footage of the robbery, Jim's wife still couldn't believe he was capable of doing it. Jim Hayes confessed his crime immediately. All he asked for was a cigarette to smoke during the interrogation. In March 2018, Jim Hayes pleaded guilty on four counts of robbery. Jim's attorney put emphasis on his clean criminal record, non-violent nature of the crime, and the pressing circumstance that had forced Jim to break the law. The former millionaire was sentenced to 33 months in prison, three years of probation, and a fine of $39,424. According to his lawyer, the nature of the crimes warranted a much harsher sentence. In a recent interview, Jim said, that this was a new turning point in his life. At the time of the interview, Jim was celebrating eight months of sobriety. He already has plans for the time of his release. He wants to publish a memoir and he has already chosen a working title, Lottery to Robbery. Jim is also looking forward to rebuilding the relationships he's lost with his friends and family while he was too busy spending on luxuries that didn't bring him happiness.